We are giving one exercise uh, I've been uh, uh, offering is that just watch your breathing for a moment. It's a very simple exercise, a very simple exercise. You're breathing in, out, happening naturally. Is In fact, you don't even have to be, decide to do it. It's happening anyway. No? But now to bring your focus into that, that as you breathe out, have the sense that all things that are in the mind, plus identity, all the thoughts, all the different kind of things, as you breathe out, you're exhaling all the air, the breath, because breath and mind is very linked. You know, you watch and you're gonna see. As you breathe out, it's taking everything out. When the air comes back in, it comes back empty. It's not able to bring anything back with it. It comes back in only as air and space. Out. Everything that's felt like it's been holding on everything like this. Your attention is present. Everything out. Yes. This is an exercise. You, after a very very short time, you see it actually you are empty anyway, because you first you 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 use that guidance. Just doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what the thought is saying. And you exhale. They say we breathe, the body takes in oxygen, what it breathes out? Carbon dioxide, isn't it? So what you breathe out, you don't need. Carbon dioxide, breathing out the carbon dioxide mind. In pure air. Space. Not taking anything but pure air space. Out. Like this. Don't become attached to this practice. Just use it. Just watch and quickly, quickly it drops everything. You find that everything is left. What remain? Pay attention. What remain? Any intention, anything still left behind is out on the next train out. That's a simple uh, guidance for anyone can use. If you want to bring attention clean, bring the attention from clutteredness to silence. Out like stale air. Body doesn't need. Being doesn't need. If you want to slow it down just for more enjoyment, you can breathe it through your teeth. When you come to the end, if you want to give more, give another three squeeze. Relax, let it clean stuff coming clean here. Okay? It's useful only to drop the association. Then you drop what is here? What's left? What's left that's not a breath? What's left that is clearly not a breath was there also during breath, but was not touched. Now you can see clearly. When this is clearly seen. Beyond mood and feeling, hmm? it begins to register in your being. So that when mind comes, stuff you see mind. Okay, mind come, full party. Ah! It's within the vastness of this. Simple, one simple exercise. You can make use of it. Mind is growing. All this, because it is been fed by what is it fed just like a fire must go out unless you keep putting more fuel on it what is feeding the mind interest and identity you believe what it says it's breathing on that that's food so what is feeding even even the if the the thought i the i thought is direct fuel. The I thought is not the I am. So the one who is present thinking, oh yeah, the mind is troubling me, that's the I thought, that's the I person. Then you see that that itself is a thought. It is the it is you may call it like it is the, the, the magnet thought that attracts other things to it. 
then see that as thought or so, and see what happened. Then let them go and fight in the bush by themselves. That's not you. Learn to pay attention to that. Otherwise, this one who suffers is going to keep on suffering. You can get a diary for the next however many years you continue that relationship, because the mind, the psychological mind, the Maya mind, is a relationship between who and who. Well, obviously, the sense I am must be there, but the I am itself is in its own hypnotic state by believing it is a person, and the person and its world they go together. And these things you must see more clearly. But I don't want to give time, or nor you should take time to be kind of figuring out what you know but won't accept. Maybe because you give it to your mind, the mind's going, No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I want rum and raisin. No, I don't want vanilla. I want rum and raisin. They say, OK, no, you're not accepting that you already know, and you already are. And you replace that with trying to be. So these things are pointers which uh, they should go directly in, directly in. They shouldn't be trying to understand. This knowledge is not coming from outside. It's just being woken up in you, stirred up in you. As soon as grace has touched your life, you begin to wake up to deeper realizations beyond the surface, deeper realizations of your true nature. It is as though, like some reflex, something grips onto the sense of the person, like the person is, is, is dissolving, and uh, some fear come. A fear that um, it can take many forms also. A fear that uh, I am not going to survive, or you are going to disappear. Some people experience like that. Or that the very mind seems to be turned against you, and is threatening to destroy your life. How can be? How can be? You are you are choosing. You are you have chosen to go more deeply into self discovery, self discovery, and God discovery. Same thing actually. In the beginning, you feel, oh, the ego is in my way. It's stopping me from from going deeper and so on. But actually, I want to say something. It might sound very unusual for for many of you. It has to happen, because um, still we are identified with a person. And as long as we are still identified with a person, the mind uh, is very much connected together with person. If the person is transcended, this uh, ego mind also collapses, you see. They work together. But you are deeper down than, than merely the superficial personal identity. So as soon as you begin to discover the deeper truth in you, it is as though the, the mind is going bananas about it. And why is it doing that? Well, actually, mm, it, the mind has no power without your cooperation, actually. It is a subtle thing, but uh, what is happening is that uh, what we have developed in the in the in the state and the stages of uh, in the realm of personhood, it feels challenged because we have developed and uh, many many wrong ideas about life and about ourselves. And as you begin to go more deep into your real discovery, it is as though something is rebelling against this change. But it's not something like uh, it is connected with a person also. When I say, don't uh, worry about this, this, uh, let me go back to your letter here. The ego is striking hard to hold me captive. To hold you captive means it is trying hard to keep you in the state of personhood. As yes. long as you are identified personally, his muscles will feel really big to you. 
But as you begin to recognize that even the person that you have for so long identified to be yourself is only an imagined self, you are slowly discovering that. And that the person itself and the mind, so the person and its problems, are both visible to a deeper consciousness in you. You are already out of the trap. You see? But because we have a relationship through memory and habit with our old identity, you see, whenever we go back into the state of identity, it's like the mind will bite you. But this very same thing, this very same uh, play, is going to at some point become actually a help to you. You're going to say, wait a second, the reason why I'm hurting is because I've gone again into the shape of my person. When I'm looking only from the neutral place of the observer, the, the detached observing, uh, I can see all of this as though they're on a screen. It's as if you go to a movie, you're watching something on the screen, and it doesn't matter if you see a train coming towards you. I remember as a child when I first saw uh, television, and they had a train coming, coming like towards you, and when the train come like this to fill the old screen, everybody went, whoa! And we forget it's only screen, like this. But we grew accustomed to it that, ah, the movies work like that. The train cannot come through the screen at all. You see? So then after later after that you laugh. Similarly, when you can see that uh, when you take the position of the weakness, the neutral and detached weakness, the person, which previously felt so strong and so intimate, become more distant and bearable. You can look at it with detachment and with distance. You must have uh, had some of this experience. And what's happening now, because you have come to a point now to deepen even further, the mind is putting up its strongest. It's the part of the play of what we call Maya. You are coming out of the sleep of personhood. And it's like to wake up, but something is calling you back into the sleep to show you where you are attached, to show you where you had promises and fantasies and projections that are not going to get fulfilled if you continue going like this. But at the same time, as you are discovering your deeper nature, you are feeling fulfilled without things because you're discovering that your own being is content and complete in itself. It doesn't need objects to make it happy. When we are in the state of personhood, we need so many things to be happy. You need a good relationship, you need to have money, you need to have a car, you need to have a house, you need to have friends who like you, you need to have places to go to. And that's the nature of uh, personal identity. But as you are discovering the root, the, the deeper awareness of yourself. That's not a thing. That's not an object. That you may call the pure subject itself. And something is merging nicely into that unity. You see? And it is as though, it appears as though, the mind and the person doesn't want to go there. Then you can see, as you are leaving one realm to go to a deeper or higher realm, you see, you have this little tension, this friction is there. But don't worry, you know, you cut the strings to that by remembering, but I'm still here. Look to yourself. Don't look through the senses and the mind and memory, because they will confuse you. Just keep paying attention to that formless awareness in you. And these things, they just vanish. They're like this. You know, no? Yes, thank yes, you yes. so much. Yes, yes, thank yes. Thank you so much. Yes, I yes. have a, I have a question. Can yes. I ask yes, a question? Yes, yes, please do, please do. So I know it's the story of the ego and but I would like to expose it. So when I am the awareness and I'm just observing all this heating and the sadness and all of that, the doubt there comes so much doubt, like the ego, the, this voice is saying, <laughs> you know, that, you know, the self. 
Yeah. You're just empty. So yeah. there is, uh, I would like to expose the doubt. Thank you. Thank you. But actually remember that the doubts are also you're aware of them. Even the doubts and the belief you're aware of them and the feelings you're aware and the memory, everything that is perceivable is arising on the screen of consciousness in this field of awareness. You're seeing everything. You see, you're discovering this more and more. So it's not enough clear yet, but it's getting clearer and clearer. Actually, you are none of these things, absolutely. We are none of these things, actually. But because we've seemed to have had a long relationship with them and have the sensation, the feeling that you don't know any different or any more. You see? Because you feel in the, in the world of personhood, you learnt about things, about people and places and things and ideas. But when you're discovering yourself, yourself is not a thing. It is the place, the root, the source from where all things appear inside you. You say, when I am awareness, but actually you're always awareness. It's just you're not remembering that you are the awareness. You forget somehow. So forgetfulness happens in awareness, and you forget, you forget that you are aware of forgetting. It's very subtle. You're maybe going to have to listen to this talk again. Okay, that even the feeling of confusion or, oh, I forget, I'm the awareness, gradually you're going to see that even remembering and forgetting are perceived in awareness. This is a very subtle point, and many people will miss it the first time they hear it, the second time they hear it, third time they hear it, maybe many times they hear it, and they think, no, I just don't get that, that's not for me. But gradually you're going to get it. And as soon as it becomes clear, like in the old days, we used to take Polaroid pictures. And when you get them, it just looks like it's just white paper. And slowly, slowly, the images come clear until they come to full development. In the same way, as you continue to earnestly follow the pointings, not just up there, but just spend time to listen deeply to what you are hearing, you don't have to listen to many, many, many things unless you have the capacity to um, take a lot of things in at once. But some people, even if you find one thing that is being said that really resonate with you, you can just put your attention on that only for a while. And it will keep opening and expanding in terms of your awareness will grow like that. You see, don't, this is not university. This is universal, but it's not university. It's not that you have to learn so many things and study so many things. This is my good news for you also. Because uh, it is so... Uh, actually, the greater the teacher, the simpler the teaching. You understand what I mean by that? The, the greater the understanding, the greater the, the, the discovering, the simpler the pointing. Why? Because ultimately it's not about words and it's not about teaching. The teachings are only a finger pointing to something which is beyond teaching. It's only to be recognized. And that becomes your experience. So please uh, remember that. It's not that we have to listen so, so many things to remember. No, not at all. In the beginning, the mind is also telling you, oh, you're never going to get it. It's too much. It's too much for you. You're, you're not good enough. You didn't come from a spiritual background. It tells a lot of lies. But this is part of your growth. So that you come, every lie, every failure is going to be a teacher for you. And you come to see that actually, I had to go through all of much of these things, not everything, because many things you have gone through already, you don't know that. Many things throughout the, the, the journey of your soul, you have gone through already. Now you have a portion of things you must look at. And if you see them properly, you may not have to go through much more again. This is where I am coming in with you. You see, you have some things that this life has brought you, that you must be aware, be aware of them. They're not meant to be on top of your head. The more you don't go up in your head, stay in your heart and watch from the place, know that everything you see, hear, touch, feel, sense, 
or imagine. They are just illusory. You don't have to hold on to any of this thing. You see? Don't reject them cynically, but don't combine yourself with anything. And you will see that you will come to a place of a kind of emptiness inside you. And automatically, you will begin to recognise you are in the presence of God. You see, you are not going to meet God in a noisy place within yourself. The noisy place is more mind. When we say meet God, I mean like you are becoming singular. You can meet, when I say God, don't think of God as some shape, as some particular entity. Because God is so amazing is in everything. Nothing can exist. Not one atom can exist without what I call the God Supreme Awareness Self. It's all the same one. We just know and call it different names because we have different temperament, different education, and so on like that. But you're going to go beyond all these things and find this place within you that has no shape. And you see that actually it is not different from what you are. We have been so accustomed to identify with shape, the shape of this body, the shape of your education, the shape of your conditioning or your whatever we are called. But uh, it's OK for a while. We are not all at the same stage. As you mature spiritually, you find that you can bear your own shapelessness. I have said before, when you can bear and be hmm, the emptiness, you are free. Always we are holding on to some shape, and every shape is a limitation. But God made all the shape also. At one time, some things were very precious to you as a shape. But as you grew, they became less important. You know, eventually, you could give them away even. Sometimes you spent a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of struggle to get one thing, and after a while it loses its value for you, because it never had value in itself. The value was in your mind. And as you grew and became more mature, you could, let, you could surrender it, you could give it away. One day you can give the whole world away, and you will find you are supremely complete. You see, giving it away simply means it's not yours in the first place. But you give up your attachment to things. And don't think you insult God by doing that. In fact, it puts everything in front of you. The mother put all the toys on the floor in front of the child to play. Then one day, once this toy and that toy is crying, I lose this, I want another toy. Then one moment, it's just one mother only. One day you will not want all these things. They are useful up to a point, but they are only here for you to grow and to realize, you see, all these things exist in you, but they are not you physically only. That, that, that is what you are discovering, you see. So, what you are going through, regard it as this is God's grace to me. He gives me all these troubles so I can overcome them. I used to say that consciousness. Uh, creates the sense of a problem in order to have the experience of transcending it. And by transcending something, you go beyond it. means that it cannot tempt you anymore. It is not in your way. And you don't have to go through everything in the world one by one by one. Find the things that come to you that, makes you, that, that brings you into the state of personhood. These are the things you need to look at, because these are the things that will give you the sense of binding you. You see? Yes. You don't curse anything, don't curse anybody. You see? And you find you are you're doing very nicely. And I stand with you on that one. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. So thank you, much. thank you. I love you so much. I love you so much. So good, 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 good. <laughs> Thank so you. wonderful. So wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my love. Just sent. <laughs>